Hey, this is Brittany Wagner with Last Chance You, and you're listening to Out of Bounds Detroit Sports. SportsRadioDetroit.com. We don't need TV to entertain us. <laughs> he said anus. I like Very it. well said. I like Your it beard is still incredible. It is. It's getting, it's getting to that level <laughs> of like... Majestic almost. I'm, I'm excited about it now. I'm, I've finally reached that level that I'm proud of it. My beard is so gross right now. Like I have pubes just glued to my face. When the fuck did you have long black hair? Basically, almost all the specs are long black. You did not. You did have long black. You look, I, you look like Ringo Starr. <laughs> you look so stupid. <laughs> smells like Cypress Civic concert in here. I think Shakira is incredibly attractive. I think her music's terrible. <laughs> it's like it's just yodeling. It's yodeling. Le, 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 le. <laughs> Welcome, Out of Bounds Detroit Sports, David Faze, Mike Tripp is back, and of course myself, Dan Griffin, invading your ear hole, as always, on SportsRadioDetroit.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts, and please, if you're listening, give us a follow on Twitter, like the Facebook page, do all those good things, you don't have to do much to help us, it's, it's, um, we don't ask for much, we used to ask for donations, but we don't, we don't bother with that anymore. We should ask for more, but we've gotten lazy. <laughs> or busy. <laughs> this show used to be a hell of a lot better when I didn't have a life. <laughs> it was way better when I didn't have a life. Now that I all I do is work, you know. It's gotten a little shittier, but whatever. We're still here. We're still plugging away. We're still doing things. Apparently, I guess there was a football game last night or something. Something happened. Some big deal. Made Philadelphia riot. I mean, you didn't watch it, but no, I'm just kidding. I did, but kind of barely, and kind of I was doing other things. It was kind of video wallpaper. I'm kind of scared what would have happened if Philadelphia lost. Probably something similar. Probably a lot of <laughs> similar, a lot of similar things. They did. Uh, they did uh, prepare with the greased up poles, just as they did for the their light poles, just for the just as they did for the uh, NFC Championship right. game. They, they, I mean, they they were prepared. It's because those people are savages. Did you see the guy that was did ate, that ate the horse shit. I read about that. I didn't see it. I'm glad yeah. I didn't. He, he celebrated. Let, let me give that to you one more again. He celebrated a Super Bowl championship for his Philadelphia Eagles, yes, by eating horse shit. Literal horse shit. Whose dare was that? <laughs> I don't know. And who is that excited I about don't. their team winning a championship that they said, yeah, I'll take that bet. <laughs> I got it. Don't worry. Hold my beer. I got this. Oh my God. Nobody can do anything dumber than me. Hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> I thought I thought I had the video here somewhere. Unbelievable. I don't know where it went though. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have it anymore. I did have it. It doesn't matter. It's just a guy eating horse shit. He's just literally picking up horse shit off the ground and putting it in his mouth and chewing it and there are l- thousands of people cheering him on. Oh my god. <laughs> and then there was a dude that drank beer out of a dirty plunger. <laughs> yes, yes, these are real people. This is what it, it just makes me wonder what the hell would uh what the hell would happen if the Lions won a Super Bowl. Philly can't handle good things. I, I clearly I they can't know. handle this good things this, happening. That's why they don't have any nice things. Wow. They couldn't even they couldn't even keep an American uh uh icon from getting cracked in the Liberty Bell. They couldn't even keep that straight. Even that fucker got cracked. When was the last time Philly won anything would it have been when the Phillies won the World Series yeah I believe that's right and before that you know because the Flyers lost Flyers didn't win a cup well they won they won what three in the 70s I I just mean recently the recent one they were in oh yeah yeah this was yeah that was it the Phillies the Sixers And 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 you know they care way more about their football team than their baseball team true I mean, everybody becomes a fan of that team of the team when they're good. It's just one of those things that just happens inevitably. Yeah, when you're from the town. But in reality, you know that like 
those people were following that baseball team for that single year. Mm-hmm. These people have been football fans for their entire lives. What was what, 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 what was with your boy uh, your boy JT at the halftime show? What about him? The hell was he doing? <laughs> I got to tell you, he kept it way too PG for my liking. I, I guess I get it. I guess I get why. That was a huge ass production that they had. But too my that. God, was it? it here's a here's a song from 2002. <laughs> every every five, every two minutes, taking you back to 2000. He just wanted to play his own stuff, man. <laughs> it's and what the hell was he wearing? What was he wearing? He that camo, uh, goofy, and then that goofy shirt he had. He looked like he was going to prom in Taylor. That's what he looked like. And then he accented it with some uh, some Air Jordans. Somebody put up and an a aw- red bandana. Somebody put up an That's awesome right. meme earlier of Bob Ross painting his T-shirt. <laughs> that, was pretty, just, I that was pretty good. I just yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't understand it. And then people were going ape shit about his whole Prince tribute, which I didn't think was bad. I no, thought was, I thought it was fine. Because there was well, they got upset originally because there was supposed to be a hologram, and Prince apparently was against holograms. Yeah, that was wasn't like exactly part of a his, hologram. Did you see the right? But they, they scrapped the hologram. There was going to be one, and they scrapped it. Well, you, you get different stories from different people because he he claims that was never in the cards. He claims they were never going to do a hologram. Um, but other people seem to believe that that was something that was discussed. Did yeah, I, guys, saw, I saw that. Did you see the? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a Dave Chappelle's face superimposed over Prince's. I mean, that's just savage. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't know, it was a, it was a very, I guess it was a, a decent production, but it was a very lackluster halftime show. In my a lot opinion. of people really liked it. Yeah, whatever. I, I was expecting to hear uh, it's gonna be May <laughs> in the middle of it. Well, well, to be honest with you, what I what, it's not it's gonna be February. The only thing about it that bewildered me a little bit is the fact that I mean he literally had an album come out on Friday yeah and he sang his his opening song was the only song from the new album that he sang and then he just went to all old stuff which I mean that's fine but I, you would think that when you have a, an album that you are currently gonna you know you're gonna start touring with that you'd throw at least one other song from that album in true especially I mean he could he could have done what a ton of people would have thought would have been really cool which there's he's got a song on that album with Chris Stable then he could have brought St- Chris Stable in along and sang that song you know what I mean oh, a lot of true. things he could have done um, but I mean he did a really good job with everything he did he just kept it kind of old school and then the selfie kid who didn't even know who the hell he was that kid <laughs> that's another meme I've seen it's a meme where it shows the, the, the split screen of the kid and then hit the phone and it's uh, Google saying who is Justin Timberlake <laughs> <laughs> I did that kid was so damn confused oh yeah was, <laughs> and then his snapchat says I look who I just met Connor McGregor <laughs> I really hope that it's all bullshit I think that's fake that's gotta be fake no idea. That'd be awesome if but Conor McGregor funny. was performing at the halftime well, there's show. There's a picture though. of Conor McGregor. There's an Instagram photo of on Conor McGregor's Instagram of him and JT, but I don't think it has anything to do with the uh, fo- the halftime show. It was from another time and place. But I wonder if that's why he posted it. I wonder if he posted it because he saw the thing about the kid and he wanted it. <laughs> Possible. Did, uh, did all the ladies at the Super Bowl party that you attended, did, did they approve of uh, Justin Timberlake's performance? We didn't really talk about it, to be honest. Then what did you talk about? What did they talk about? I don't know. I don't worry about what they're talking about. <laughs> it's not my problem. Is it? Was it one of those Super Bowl parties where like all the chicks are off in the like in the kitchen? No, while the guys are around. No, we were the game? all intermingled, but uh, you know they, they talk a little bit about the game. And if there's like an exciting play that happens, it doesn't matter who you are. If there's something exciting, you get excited. But even if you're not like a giant sports fan, you like exciting moments. But you know they're they're having their own little side conversations about this and that, and most of the guys obviously are talking football and talking sports in general, and that's just kind of how it works. So, but yeah, no, they weren't they weren't like they, they didn't segregate themselves in the kitchen. They were all we were all intermingled, but you're just having your own side conversations. I'm actually really glad I didn't go to a Super Bowl party yesterday. Well, one, I wasn't that interested to watch the game to start with. But also, once the fucking snow started coming down, I'm just like I'm gonna just take a seat here on the couch. And I'm, yes, I did this. I was that guy. I watched the Super Bowl by myself. <laughs> well, I, I'd say right, <laughs> right now, here at home. Had I had we not planned to go to a party that was literally three minutes from our house, I probably would not have traveled for a party either. Straight up, like if we had had plans to go to a party where I had to go half an hour, thirty five minutes, I would probably would have not have been going. I'd be like, fuck this, I'm just gonna stay home and watch it. I don't need to. Pretty, I don't need that. They're dude. They're never worth it. 
Super Bowl parties are never worth it. Well, especially I if you hype it up. You I know? would much rather have a small gathering of like five to eight people. At that, that's it. That's all I need. I don't need you know all all the. I don't need all the chatter. I don't need all the cleanup afterwards. I don't need all that. Not on a Sunday. Now you start putting the Super Bowl on a Saturday, or you know, giving me the day off on Monday, then 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 we'll have a conversation about if, a Super Bowl. If party. only, if I, only. I don't know if I'm just like an old curmudgeon now, or how that, or what's going on there. But I tell you what, su- I, I hear Super Bowl party, and I'm just like, eh. I, w- I actually went to the uh, the hub last night. They had a Super Bowl party there. Oh, that must have been. You need you actually needed a ticket in order to get in, and a buddy of mine is a manager there, and so did you he, some, did you do some axe throwing. I, dude, the lines for that thing were crazy long. <laughs> no big that, shot there. Uh, bomb bowling, and then what did you just call? What is it called? They they ha- they call it bomb bowling. They can't call it foaling because oh. the foaling warehouse in Hamtramck trademarked that name. Got it. So they call it bomb bowling, but it's the same concept. Okay. And um, so it, otherwise it was thirty dollars to get in, but they had um like buffet style food. Wings, chicken tenders, like a build your taco bar, like a build your own taco, pizza, jalapeno poppers, yeah, mozzarella sticks. I mean, they they had <laughs> they had everything. But then, but and did the ticket include food? Then, or yes, what? it did. Oh, okay. Yep. And then um, that's all I need to be in, be in line behind Mike while he's dropping his beard of hair all in all in the dip <laughs> with, with the flu going around right now. Yeah, and it was a there was a tap takeover too with uh, bells too, so that was cool. But I mean, it was a good time. We if we would have had to pay for the tickets, we wouldn't have gone. But since we got them for free, it's like, all right, yeah, we're doing this. I'm glad you had a good time. But I we, had to we, watch. I had to watch the first half on a laptop screen. Like we couldn't even hear <laughs> the game at all. They had just like generic house music, whatever was playing at the facility, and then they had a live band play like. Three or four songs just before halftime. Then they allowed us to listen to JT. See that? And then, and then after that, all the volume went down again. And then it was just house music. House or like it was like Beyonce, Black Eyed Peas, so, stuff so, like that. So they, they didn't they didn't just play the sound of the game. No, they act, they had a, they had a few rooms like like the room that had all the food. They had a few big screen TVs in there with the audio. And then there was another room that had like couches and uh, whatnot, another lounge area that also ha- was playing the audio. But the main auditorium or whatever you want to call it. What the fuck is going on? No audio. I'm intrigued by that place because it, it seems like it's a lot fancier than the polling room. That seems like an incredible distraction. Like if you want to watch the game, it was like it, like that's that's not a Super Bowl. That's that's what that's the thing about Super Bowl parties. Whenever you go to a Super Bowl party, you can't watch the game. You just can't watch the game. There's too many because somebody's got that girlfriend right that just just has to just jib, jibber jabber the whole damn game. If somebody somebody's got one of those. Now in this case, uh, it's not Dave and it's not you. Of course, I haven't met your lady, Mike. <laughs> she didn't even make it out last night. She did not get out of bed. She's starting to feel better finally after about a week and a half. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's always that one broad. She wouldn't even been talking. She, well, if anything, she would've been like hanging out with. I ain't gotta be a dick. It's just a game. With, I mean, my parents, they came out to also it. Also, the whole reason we're here. So she would've been hanging out with them and probably my youngest brother's girlfriend who was there. But yeah, it was me, my brothers, my buddy Blaine, and uh, my friends, my coworker Joey and his girlfriend Michelle. We were all just mingling, drinking, and. Kind of going back and forth in between yeah, the TVs and I didn't have any of that problem yesterday. Actually, that we didn't. Ha- it wasn't one of those parties that was uh, rampant with distracting people. Was it, was it actually, mellow? It was. And how many is, people were there? Uh, God, 12, 15? See, that's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's not too bad. I could live with that. Anything over anything over that twelve to fifteen. It, now and, you're and getting it, into annoying territory. Everybody was interested in the game, so it wasn't like you had a. You know, it wasn't like you had a. A bunch of random people that show, you know, you got those, those, you always seem to have a couple of people that show up just because, like, somebody invited them, like, hey, you should come hang out for this party. Right. And they could give two shits about the game or anything happening around the event. So they're the, usually the ones that are being the distracting ones because they don't have any problem with not watching the game and not paying attention to it and having conversations about this and that. And then everybody else is, shut up. You know, it's <laughs> like, we don't care about your. Hey, Chatty Kathy. Yeah. 
See that wheel of Gouda? Shove it in your face. Shut up. Yes. Trying to watch the damn game. On Super Bowl Sunday, save your life problems for the next day, okay? It's like, that's the thing. Like, a Super Bowl party is a Super Bowl party. You're there. You, that's the whole reason you're there. Uh-huh. Because that bitch always has, to, always has to think that you're being an asshole because you're the one that told her to shut up. This is a Super Bowl party. That's why we're here. We're here to watch football. And I and now I got to tell you, as terrible as the commentary was this season, maybe I would have been all right without wow. with, with not seeing it. Wow! I, it? I I'm done with Chris Collinsworth I, for the rest of my life. Luckily, never I was, again. I wasn't able to hear anything you said, and I was ta- I was texting a banker about it, and he goes, "I think Chris Collinsworth keeps referring to Matt Patricia as the Pistons head coach." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Did he, oh, Al did Michaels Chris, said it too. Did Chris? Oh, it was Al Michaels. That's what it was. I'm did sorry. Chris he did Collinsworth it twice, I guess. have a stroke? What is wrong with this guy? And then the way the way that he's sitting there trying to sell you on that on that Ertz touchdown, that go ahead touchdown at the end, where they were talking about the uh, the, the Jesse James catch in Pittsburgh. Like this one is so different. Ertz caught that pass, took forty five steps, yep. and dove over the goal line, crossed yeah. the plane, a touchdown. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, if Gene Steratore had come out and ruled that an incomplete pass, Minnesota would have burned down that night. Oh yeah. Because I mean, I got to. I was even sitting there thinking, like, okay, this should stand. Yeah. But that's where we are with NFL but rules it, now. And it took How, do way you know for too sure? long. Yeah. Do you know for sure if they, dude, if they had called that back, can you imagine? Because there's always conspiracy theories flying around with the Patriots, right? All the time, Patriots are cheaters, yada 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 yada, all that shit. Can you imagine? If Gene Steratore comes out and says the receiver did not complete the process, well, for God's sake, incomplete he, pass. He had established enough to basically almost be considered a runner at that point. Well, that's the point. He was you a know? runner, and so it's like, yeah, there's no way. All he did, all you do is break the plane. I texted you, exactly. I, I text you and Jeff. I'm like, they finally got one right. I cannot wait for that rule to be reviewed. I, I just, why can't there just be some, some, some? Sub- subjectivity to it for referees' discretion. You know why does it? Ha- why do we have to have a set rule for what's a catch and what's not? I almost want to just don't. You're not able to review catches anymore. The ruling on the field is the ruling on the field, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Period. Unless the yeah, it, unless no, there is no unless. Well, that's going to be it. The only way is if the if the referee on the field is just so atrociously wrong and it's so obvious that it's wrong. That'd be the only way I would want to see something overturned one way or the other. Yeah, like which an, does happen like every Alex, once in a while. Like an Alex Smith skip pass to the sideline. <laughs> that's not a complete pass, sir. Yeah. Oh man, I would. I. I. I probably wouldn't have lost my mind. I probably would have just busted out laughing. There's going to be right some here. very interesting quarterback movement in the NFL over the offseason, too. By the way, oh, yeah. it's already started. But. We can. We can get there. We're, right now, what I want. What I would like to do. Uh, we can get to. Uh, we can get to, to Pink's national anthem in uh, later on in the show because I'm I'm curious to I'm curious to get your guys' opinion on how she did, but don't tell me. That's called a tease in the biz. I think there was was there not there was prop bets about what color her hair was going to be. Did you know that? What was blonde? It must have been two to one. She's been blonde I'm not sure. forever. She's been blonde. Well, no, no, no. Like whether she would have actual pink in it. I'm like she hasn't had that in a no, long time. No, she's, she's been, been a long she's been time. Straight. She's a mom now. Still looks damn good. She I'll does. tell you that. Yep. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, I did want to break down the game. So the way I wanted to do this, though, um, I'm going to give you my take. And then Dave, you can give yours, and Mike, you can give yours, and then we can rap about it. How's that sound? Sounds good. I I also love how she's always been the non like cookie cutter pop singer. Still is. Yep. She's I know. Getting, no, I know that she's getting some shit on Twitter, Spray, and she was handing it right back. Anyway, <laughs> moving along. Anyway, when it comes to the game itself. I think the biggest thing that I took out of this game was, first of all, it didn't have the sex appeal for me going into it. But I well, will, yeah. but I will tell you this: it was a great football game. There's no, there's no way around it. It was a damn fine uh, game. And the biggest thing that I took out of it was that Bill Belichick was outcoached by Doug Peterson. Yes, not by a long shot. It wasn't like a, a wide margin, but. What I took out of it was that Doug Peterson did the opposite, being the play caller for the Eagles, did yeah. the opposite that Kyle Shanahan did last year. Doug Peterson which, never... Which did not do Shanahan very well, as we all know. No, yeah, yeah. 28-3. to three. Yeah. Uh, but Doug Peterson never wavered. 
you, you could you could see the confidence in him on the sideline, and I think that that's one of those things that um, passes over to his players, and and that's what happened in the NFC Championship game, which was a blowout. That's what happened in all these playoff games for the Eagles. Basically, that's that's basically what's been going on most of the season. Well, see, I I I disagree with that it happened in all the playoffs because I truly believe that he was for for his, especially for his standards because most of the year you are 100% right he's been an aggressive play caller. I think he sat back a little bit in that divisional round, which I think is a part of why that that uh game went the way it did. And and it almost bit them a little bit. Now, obviously, Jim Schwartz defense played phenomenal in that game and and got them through. Uh, and you got to have both sides of the football playing well to 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 make a run in the playoffs, obviously. But but other than that, every game has been just as about as aggressive as you're going to see in the in the NFL these days. And I, like you said, it's no holds barred for him. He's like, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. He just went for it. Yep. He went for it. You could tell that he didn't second guess himself the entire game, and ultimately, that's what got the Eagles the win. Now, I didn't like going for two early early in that game. I don't I don't like the idea of trying to make up points yep. when you miss an extra point. I, I wasn't in love with that decision. Um, but I will tell you, there were a couple of other calls that were made. I mean, the obvious one is the fourth and one call with the with the Nick Foles touchdown catch. Yeah. Now that play to me is what makes a great head football coach. How how much have we bitched about uh, Jim Caldwell and Jim Bob Cooter over the last few years about their lack of uh, their, their their lack of uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for creativity? Creativity. Jesus Christ. Well, okay, and, what, and am I we'll, high or something? And I will say, obviously, this is something else we'll get to, but I, I, I'm not 100 percent sold on that, that. That the lack of creativity was on Jim Bob. N- well, here's we'll, th- and we'll see. Here's the thing. We'll th- th- there's also that. there's also a caveat to that. Obviously, this was the Super Bowl. There was a time and a place. Sure, but you could see that Doug Peterson looked at his team and said, "I've got to play." There's what was there like 25 seconds left before the half. Yeah, it's fourth and one. He recognized that in games like this. Field goals are how you lose. So Doug goes, okay, it's fourth and one um, from the one-yard line. I've got a play, and it's going to work. They've never seen it on film. We've never used it. We're going to run this shit, and it's going to work, and it worked. It's the same same play Jim Bob called <laughs> against Green Bay. And the two point conversion. Oh yeah, it's well, basically the same play. Who cares? <laughs> well, no, I, no. Again, that's go, that speaks to the time the and place that, thing. I understand. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's the same play, but used in a, in a much more important scenario. It obviously. was a gutsy call, and I'm going to tell you right now. Even if it didn't work, I still would have loved it. Yeah, I still would have loved. It. I love the way. I just loved. I thought that the way that Doug Peterson called this game. I have watched every Super Bowl since Super Bowl 30. I have now watched 22 consecutive Super Bowls. And I cannot recall a time where I have seen that masterful of play calling. That may have been the best called game in Super Bowl history from the games that I've seen of, uh, anyway. I've never seen it done any better than that. And then you have <clears throat> later on in the game, uh, in the fourth quarter, the Patriots take their first lead of the game, and that's where you go, okay, um, Magic's run out on the Eagles, right? Think again. Well, they just kept playing football. Think again. Third down and one, they decide to throw the ball. I thought that was a bad play call. They lost about a yard and a half. But then what does Doug do? He gets on the headset. He says, we're going to call our best play, and we're going to throw the ball to our best player. They picked it up, and they go down and score. And so the way that Doug Peterson called that game, I thought was absolutely masterful. And um, the other thing that I would say... Is I'll have a pickup for them to go get Elshon Jeffrey this offseason, by the way. He only and, had four catches, but they were all big. And and that's what that's what a number one caliber receiver does. And that's something they didn't have before they went on and got him. So again, filled their roster with guys they needed. They did a great job. And I I would say that the, the that the unsung heroes of this game were actually I realize they gave up five hundred five passing yards and they gave up thirty three points. It was at Eagles front four. Because Tom Brady, while still having one of the better uh, Super Bowl pr- passing performances ever, it's probably his. It's probably his best passing performance in any of his Super Bowls that he's been in. Five hundred yards, of course. Well, I'm not even. I, not just the honor in general. I mean, ever it was just. It was pretty textbook. It was phenomenal but, for a forty year old uh, quarterback. But here's the thing: you could tell Tom Brady didn't look comfortable a lot of that game. He was only twelve for twenty four in the first half. Right. Every throw seemed to be. 
uncomfortable for him. And that Eagles front four, they didn't get any sacks until, obviously, the play that salted the game away. Right. But Tom Brady was hit nine times. They were in his kitchen all day long. And how do you beat Tom Brady? That's how you do it. It's the only way you do it. You have to get... But Tom Brady, as great as he is, is 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 absolutely mortal when you get in his face. And that's what we saw for the first half of that game. So, and then finally, the defensive front gets in there and salts the game away, and all they needed to do was make one big play. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, that offensive front for the Eagles. I mean... The amount of time... Nick Foles could have knit a sweater in the pocket most of the game. That's how much... They gave him plenty of time. And I'll tell you what, Nick Foles won the MVP of this game, and I think he deserved it. But I'll tell you what, in a game like that, against a team like that, I think that offensive line made it about as easy for Nick Foles as they could possibly have made it. And 164 yards on the ground is nothing to sneeze at either. So the Eagles won this game, in my opinion, in the trenches throughout the entire game. Which, as we know, a lot of times that's how games are won. When you dominate on both sides of the ball like that. So those are my two big takeaways from this. Doug Peterson, absolutely masterful coaching performance. One of, if not the best uh, coaching performance I've ever seen in a Super Bowl. And the way the Eagles got it done on both sides of the ball up front. So I don't know what your fun take is, Dave. Uh, well, did you pull anything else away? Uh, I'll 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 flip over to the other side, and we'll do it that way. Uh, I, I I that game really really proved, and again, it, it, it's a testament as well to how good the Eagles played. Uh, but it also, I believe, showed something that I think got lost the second half of the year uh, for the for the the Patriots because they kind of. They they went all Patriots and and got back to doing what the, whatever we we've all grown accustomed to them doing over the last twenty years almost it seems like, uh, but uh, they defensively don't have a lot of playmakers, and scheme wise, where the hell was Malcolm Butler? Matt Patricia has done a fa- I think that actually is a testament to Patricia's abilities. The fact that he had this team the second half of the year as a what top five de- defensive unit with. Without a really a lot of top end talent across the board, and they had no pass rush. Now again, again, I think part of that is that I believe the Eagles' offensive line did a really, really nice job. I mean, Nick Foles had all day to throw the ball, and that's going to help you when you, um, uh, you know, if, if it helps you feel a lot more comfortable, and that's how you have the kind of game that Nick Foles had because you you've got time to comprehend what's going on in the field, and you're not you know you don't have hands in your face all the time, so. The Eagles' offensive line, first and foremost, did a really, really nice job for him. But part of that equation is that the New England Patriots just didn't generate any pressure. Uh, and you know, up the middle, they didn't. They had nobody. Run. You know who's one of their one of their best defenders, and it's a guy that we've mentioned already before. The, uh, before the uh, today, and let me guess, who's that? Does he have three names? Sure does. <laughs> is he a former Lion? Sure is. You speak of Kyle Van Noy. He played really well, <laughs> and he he he's. Matt Patricia used him has has used him since he got to New England per- perfectly, exactly the way Kyle Vanoy should be used. He's, he fills gaps um, and they allow him to play outside, so that he is he gets a lot of uh, uncontested uh, you know kind of runs into the backfield. He's still going to make the plays once he get there, but he's he's get, get, getting a lot of opportunities to to get some good shots at people and 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 get you know get into the backfield a lot. Um, and I thought he played really well. And, and in fairness, I don't think that the uh, Patriots' defensive backs played terribly. I think, especially on that first touchdown, the coverage was really good. No, I think they got exposed a because, little bit because of the way that that Eagles offensive line was able to protect Nick Foles. And that's the thing you get when you and they really had to respect the run. When a quarterback has that much time to throw, advantage is always for the receiver. Always. Uh, so yeah, that hundred percent. I agree. And so, it, I, I, you know, the Malcolm Butler thing is a whole other thing. That's I, and so I don't, fucking bizarre. I don't know what's going on there, and, and I'm sure at some point in time we'll we will actually find something out. Somebody will dig that up. And wasn't and Eric Rowe a former Eagle? If I'm, I'm that, I don't know. If I'm if I'm 
not mistaken. He may be. What was the name? Eric Rowe. Eric Rowe. He's basically yeah. the guy. He's the guy who took over for Malcolm. Yeah. Well, they're, they're they're talking disciplinary. He he had his, he had a an they il- said he it was like, illness. Yeah, they and said he had a bad week at practice. Or I don't know. That that all seems very odd. And look, it's not. Uh, I can understand if all those things are true. I could actually feasibly understand where he you didn't start him. He was an eagle. And 2000, you, 2015. And, so, you, and you chose to play somebody else over him because of, you know, schematically you just felt, felt the fit was better to begin, right? But when your defense starts getting torched the way it did and clearly you needed to make some adjustments, the fact that he didn't see the field on a, for a defensive snap the entire game, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, and they they like relegated him to special teams duty, so it's not like he didn't dress and wasn't playing at all. They just strategically chose not to play him a single defensive snap. I don't I don't understand it. I uh, and here's the th- here the other part. You know, anybody who's talking about, um, you know, I I heard some people today, obviously with the Matt Patricia to Detroit thing becoming officially oh, official. Oh God, don't some even. Pe- no, no, I heard some people saying, well, you know, what's what's that going to uh, mean for what what you know Detroit's players think of Matt Patricia? Absolutely guy. nothing. Nothing, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm sure Matt Patricia has a hand in that decision. But you're going to tell me that Bill Belichick no, didn't no. say we're not playing this guy. One has nothing to do <laughs> no, with the doesn't. other. And I'll tell you, what, I saw it on Twitter all all over the place uh, last night, Facebook as well. Oh. Uh, Glad to see this guy's going to be the next Lions head coach. Oh, my God. Can't dude. stop anybody. It's been awful. It's been it's a ridiculous. It's one game. Yeah. The two, have, the two have nothing to do with each other. And don't you think maybe it's a possibility? I mean, I'm sure Matt Patricia was all in on this Super Bowl. Don't sure. get me wrong. I'm sure he was all in trying to win this ring for his guys. But he's got a little bit of a distraction going on right now and the fact of that he's course. taking on another job. Of course. And and here's I, I don't know how Matt Patricia is going to be here. I have no idea. It may blow up in our faces just like every other coach has before, but it may not. There's no way to know until he gets but here. But neither one of those things will be will correlate to the fact that he, they didn't play well in the Super Bowl. No, the Patriots no, didn't play well. In the Super Bowl. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> it's so I stupid. don't. I just. I don't understand people. Like how in the how in the oh, I, dude, in, I gave up in, on that concept a long time ago. Trying to understand people, it's not going to happen. How in the name of fuck can you? <laughs> possibly think that the Patriots' defensive performance in the Super Bowl has anything to do with how good of a head coach uh, Matt Patricia will be. Because you don't understand things. <laughs> Lots of things. It's like people are just looking for hot takes out on the street now. They're not. It's like they're not getting it from uh, from uh, uh, Max Kellerman and Stephen A. Smith anymore. They're making up their own shit, and it's even dumber. <laughs> it's just it's it's. Oh God! It was so. It was. I was one of those things where it's like, okay, should I should I tweet at this person? No. No, not worth it. Not worth my time. I'm going to have another beer, take my pants off, put my finger in my belly button, and watch some Netflix before I go to bed. I love doing that. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> just... um, so the other, the, bringing it back for a second, the other thing that I took out, the other, the other point that I'll make, is that one of the things that we've talked about so many times over the course of, of this Patriots dynasty that it's been, right, is the way that they are so good – uh, and Belichick mainly, obviously, is is the catalyst for this. But the way that they are so good at finding value in players, right, and knowing what player is going to fit their their scheme so well that another, if he went on another uh, to another team, he might not be that successful. But with the Patriots, he's a stud because they just know how to use the players. I think the Eagles did a good job of that this year. On multiple accounts. Look, you go in and bring in LeGarrette Blunt, who's a perfect fit for well, your system. Well, before you continue, what's his nuts? The 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 the, the GM. Um oh God, the guy looks like he never played a down of football in his life. Kind of looks like Pee Wee Herman. The Eagles GM? Yeah. I don't remember his name. He's well he was the guy look him up for me, Mike. I'm just his name slipping my mind, but he was the guy that was there before Chip Kelly got there. And then he and Chip Kelly had that rift and they let him go. Yeah. To let Chip Kelly take over, and then Sh- Chip Kelly got shit canned, and they brought this guy back, and now look what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. This could have happened for the Eagles six years ago if they had done it the right way and found the right coach. Well, you know, and in a weird way, go ahead, Mike, you got it. Howie Roseman? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Howie Roseman. Um, in a weird way, all the looks things. Like that, ho- it looks like. <laughs> all the things looks that like Chip Kelly <laughs> thought he was going to do in terms of changing, stylistic changing, uh, you know, the offensive game for, for the NFL and creating all these new concepts. Doug Peterson's actually doing a little bit of that, and the way he's doing it is actually success, is actually a, a a feasible way to play in the NFL, and clearly it's working, right? 
So it's it is funny. There's a lot of weird kind of parallels to what they tried to do and where they actually are now. And and anyway, they're in a much better spot clearly. But but you know, there's a, a few players come to mind. Uh, two of them happen happen to be former Patriots, obviously, which is just a little bit of irony. But you got Legarrette Blunt and Chris Long both playing big parts for the Eagles. And then the other guy that I look at in a big offseason trade that the Eagles made, who that I think some people were a little surprised by because they were trading an offensive weapon, and obviously Doug Peterson is looked is the offensive guy. But that trade they made to get Ronald Darby was a huge deal for them. He was an absolutely integral part to that defense, a defense that played very well up until I mean, really neither defense uh, put up big statistical numbers last night, but the Eagles made the plays when they needed to make the plays, and that was the big difference. Um, Jim Schwartz, you know, you look at you know yardage, and both both squads look like they didn't even come to play. If you're talking about total yards, but it doesn't tell the story. And if you if you don't know that, then you weren't watching the game. Uh, so, look, they they have made some really shrewd personnel decisions over the court last 18 months, and acquired some guys that became just humongous parts of why they were able to be successful. And and then you know and then you look at Doug Peterson being a former QB coach, a former quarterback, obviously, and an offensive guy who was able to get the most out of Nick Foles. Who and I want to say this: if you're looking at a career backup type guy, I think Case Keenum and Nick Foles are in very different categories. Personally, I because I, Foles at least looks to me at times like I, I've always thought that he's been a bit of an enigma because he's a guy that talent wise looks like he should be capable of being a, a starter. But it just seems to never been able to figure it out. Nick Foles is a guy that needs the perfect storm. Uh, Doug Peterson even said it himself. They went back and they checked some tape. Yep. And they looked at what made Nick Foles successful when Chip Kelly was there. And they used a lot of those same concepts. What a crazy concept. Actually scheme to fit your quarterback properly. Well, and you know, crazy. He's, he's a guy that played a lot of spread in college. So that's kind of what he's familiar with is that that kind of almost more of a hybrid offense coming from Arizona. I'll tell you this, though, and I know some team's going to do it. I know they will. Somebody's going to pay for him. Yeah. So, um, somebody's going to give up a King's Ransom to trade for Nick Foles. And I think, it's, I think it's a mistake. I think it's a huge mistake. Nick Foles played great. Nick Foles had the perfect storm, and not only did he have the perfect storm, but he also played exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything went well for Nick Foles over these last, whatever it's been, eight or so weeks uh, since Carson Wentz went down. Well, it's not like he looked good in every single game in the regular season that he played. Or or in the playoffs, for that matter. He had a couple of... Again, that's probably another part of the divisional round game, and maybe maybe I'm being a little bit obtuse to say that it was play calling. Maybe Nick Foles just simply didn't play well, and that's very possible. I'd have to go back and look. But I'm I'm not bringing Nick Foles in to be the guy. I'm not... Somebody's going to. I know somebody's going to. I think it's a huge mistake, now, and I don't now, think it's going to work. Now, the the only way that I could see somebody doing it and have it not be an absolute disaster is I just the you can't sign on for him to like be a guy for you long term. Like if somebody goes out and gives him a like trades to and it's part of the trade does what the the uh, Redskins are doing with the Alex Smith trade, which obviously can't actually be finalized until the first day of free agency, but. Uh, if somebody goes out and makes a trade for Nick Foles and as part of the deal works out an extension of like four or five years from that would be a terrible decision to make. If somebody goes out and trades for him, I don't even know what his contract is, but if somebody goes out and trades for him and he's on one or two years, that's doable. It's a feasible move. Uh, but if somebody's going to try to you know tie their wagon to him, that's a bad de- it's a bad decision because it's not he's he's not a guy who's going to go turn a also ran organization into a winner all the time. No, Nick, not, Nick, Nick, Nick Foles guy. isn't going to Cleveland and winning a Super Bowl. Precisely. <laughs> I mean, Precisely. That's just not, the, and, and the only other way I could see it is if training camp, somebody that's got a good football team. Loses, like what happened to the Dolphins. Loses their quarterback. Like what happened to the Dolphins this year. Basically. Yep. Now they went and got Jay Cutler, who honestly quietly didn't really have that bad of a year right. in Miami. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 right. he was Jay Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what we saw. He was Jay Cutler. He was just vintage, average Jay Cutler with a few less interceptions. But I could see that possibly happening. But you know somebody's going to go out and make a deal for this guy. Mm-hmm. And there's, I think There's going to be a lot of quarterback movement. I don't know what's going to happen with Keenum. I don't know what's going to happen with Cousins. I don't know what's going to happen with Foles. Cousins to the Jets is see, the new one that came out today. See, you know what's another interesting concept that somebody threw out to me the other day about Kirk Cousins? Would be, it would be I wouldn't say come out of left field, but I think it might surprise people. Is somebody said, well, you know who's got a 
who has a, a quarterback opening, technically speaking, and who has a pretty decent chunk of uh, of cap space this offseason, it's the Minnesota Vikings. And I don't think any any of those guys are technically under contract at this point. I think there's a, I think there's an option for Bradford, I believe, and Keenum's a free agent, and Bridgewater, Bridgewater's a free agent. So if they decide that they want to go a completely different direction, and they're obviously more than welcome to do that, that's another option. And I'll tell you what, if I'm Kirk Cousins and I'm going to a team that right now is in a pretty damn good position to, to win now, that might not be a bad move. <laughs> I got a funny feeling the Vikings are going to go with Keenum. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. I mean, Case Keenum played pretty well this year. Well, I think of the three guys they had, that's probably the most likely. Is even though Bridgewater's young and guys, I just think that there's there's too, way too much. And it seems funny to be saying, comparing this with Case Keenum, but there's so much unknown with Bridgewater right now, coming off of a severe injury that almost had ended his career, almost had his leg. Well, I, there's another thing. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater's a guy that somebody's going to be bringing in to, to hand the reins over to. I think he'll, he'll he's Bridgewater probably, might wind up as his backup. He's probably going to get somebody. a low level backup. He's probably going to be a low level backup somewhere. You you want to know a team that's uh, you know got a decent amount of salary cap that could probably use a backup quarterback? Green Bay. Any any guesses? No, not Green Bay. Another team in that division though. Who's the Lions? Your Detroit Lions. They, got, they like they like Rudolph, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, I and, just, and you know, I don't want to know what's going to happen if he gets into a game. Well, here's the other. Here's the other reason why they like. There's two things they like about Rudolph. One, they he's been in the system now for two years, so he's familiar. He's it's familiar, and there's uh, there is a, a sense of uh, comfort but if, there. If but the, he's also super cheap. That's the, another part. If the Lions give Teddy Bridgewater a two year deal, are you? Are you I'm 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 going to be. I, no, I, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not saying I would care. I'd be that, happy but, to see that. But. Um, well, well, let's put it this way. We know he can run an NFL offense. He already proved that. Um, and you would at least have some semblance of, of, of knowing that you would be putting in a guy who I don't think is going to go in and lose you a bunch of football games. <laughs> Stafford, Stafford goes out week three, throws three interceptions, the whole town's calling for Teddy Bridgewater to <laughs> come in. Well, you know that's exactly and, how it would go. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, with this with this you know upcoming offseason here that's going to start in, in about a about – Oh, what about a month now? Is when free agency starts. The fourteenth, I think, is the first day of free agency. But uh, we'll we'll see if they if they follow what Bob Quinn has said is something he wants to do, which is to, some way, shape, or form, acquire a quarterback every off season. Doesn't mean those guys will stay, but you know he might draft another guy sixth or seventh round, or maybe they'll sign an undrafted guy they keep. I don't know, but we'll. I think it's a smart business play in the NFL because you just never know what's going to happen to that position. Even if you have the stud guy like the Lions do have with Stafford, if that guy gets hurt. Where you at if you don't if you don't plan for it you know so it's gonna be interesting. I enjoyed that football game last night though I'll tell you I'll tell you that it was it was a good football game. Free agency starts February twentieth it says February twentieth okay bring him in. So you know what I'm thinking I think that the I there is a the fourteenth of March is a date that's for something I think that that might be the new league year or something. That's there's a there's something to that date. We'll look it up now. It we'll doesn't look, it doesn't we'll matter and we're gonna forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to break. We've got more to cover. We've got we we, we got to get to the to the future of these two football teams on a Super Bowl special, and uh, I don't know a couple other things that I'm sure we'll come up with during the break because that's usually how it works. Out of bounds, Detroit Sports. David Faze, Mike Tripp, myself, Dan Griffin. Do not go anywhere. This is Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion, Detroit Red Wings, Lemieux, killer, Stanley Cup winning goal guy. Uh, you're listening to SportsRadioDetroit.com. We're pretty much ready to go here with this podcast. What the hell is a podcast? Oh, yeah. Welcome back. Quickly, we come back. Out of bounds, Detroit Sports. David Faze, Mike Tripp, and myself, Dan Griffin, invading your ear hole as always. SportsRadioDetroit.com. Apple Podcasts, or wherever the hell you listen to podcasts. And please go to SportsRadioDetroit.com. 
Grab up all the other fantastic content. If you're going to be a Super Bowl junkie, I'm sure there'll be a plenty of it available on the website uh, for uh, about a week to come. So, written material, other podcasts that aren't as good as ours. No offense, guys, but it's all about us. What are you looking at over there, Dave? Nothing. I'm just waiting for the show. I'm just, just chilling. <laughs> I just scrolling through. This is this, this, this why I love having Dave as a co-host. He's he, the, the way he walks in here, the way he struts in here, sets himself down in his chair, and he just goes with it, man. Just goes with the flow. He's like he's like the fucking Matthew McConaughey of podcasting. Breaks out a Dos Equis, puts on. A if I were the Matthew McConaughey, I should be breaking out some uh, some wild turkey because that's what he's that's what he's representing now. You did drive a Lincoln here. I did. It's you true. did drive a Lincoln I here. Did. So he's halfway there. He's re- he re- it's it's true. I gotta roll fake boogers in my uh, in my car on the way home. And talk to myself <laughs> and, and do, Intros- introspectively. And smoke weed and do yoga nude with all the windows open. That's the unaired. <laughs> that's the unaired version of those commercials. That's <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't remember that story, right? I think I do. Yeah, like that. You know, he had like the drapes pulled open with his while he was uh, sitting in his house. He's doing yoga, smoking weed, nude, <laughs> and everybody can see in there. That's why you gotta love Matthew McConaughey, right? He's just a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. Unless we find out that he's like sexually harassing somebody, we're gonna be we're pretty much going to be cool with basically anything that uh, Matthew McConaughey does. So that's you, Dave. But, but That's the biggest compliment I've ever given you on this show. He'll do with so much southern charm that it, it'll get, he'll get away with it. It's all right. It's all right. It's just your boob, baby. That was a little bit Matthew McConaughey, a little bit Bill Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a very strange a love child right there. What? Oh, God. it would be born with a bulbous red nose. He's going to get Clinton's nose. You know it. <laughs> and, a, and a really pink wiener. I'm saying it's a boy, of course. I know. I've just always had this idea that Bill Clinton's got a se- severely pink wiener. It's like 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 almost confusingly pink. Is it is it is it a is it a like a <laughs> like some sort of a strange party favor? Like what what is why is it so why is it pink? I don't know. It, I, don't I just I just feel like it should be. Just looking at him. Is it doesn't a, he look it, like a guy that would have a, a seriously pink party wiener? balloon? I mean, what? Well, now it probably is. <laughs> I mean, we did have to hear about his dick for like a year back in the nineties. I mean, don't tell me you never thought about Bill Clinton's dick. All you did was hear about it. Uh, like, 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 let's not act like I'm the weird one. No, I never <laughs> once thought about Bill Clinton's dick. You never thought about it in that in that uh, in that chick's mouth. You never thought about it. No, no. I mean, there, I'm sure there were various porn parodies made from that. I'm sure. I haven't bothered to look them up, but I probably should now. Research. Now that I've thought about it. Uh, anyway. What were we going to talk? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it, the Super Bowl was yesterday. I almost forgot why we were here or what we were here to do. Uh, so with any Super Bowl, right, comes hilarity. There has to be. I think we're going to make this an annual thing now. There's we just a to. lot of people doing a lot of ridiculous things after their team wins. Yeah. That's so there ha- always so goes. funny things have to happen. I think yes. we need to make this a yearly thing where we just we, 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 we break down the game. We had some fun with that uh, during the first segment. Now... We can break down all of the ridiculous shit that happened surrounding the football game. Yep. Let's see how this goes. Where would you gentlemen like to start? Because Mike's just going, just rattling off shit. There's probably a thousand things you didn't even get to. Yeah. And we picked four or five pretty special things. All right. Um, Are they special? I don't know. Do you want to start with uh, what's on the screen there? Oh, Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart you did. Want, you want to lead off with him? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's probably the one that that, that, that really stole the day. Um, well, first of all, I don't even have this part, but he tries to tries to climb on the podium during the, during the celebration. Did you see that? Yeah, during the trophy presentation when they're walking it down. Yeah, you see I know, him. I mean, those stairs were so high, he probably had to climb <laughs> up it like a baby. <laughs> you see him trying to get up there, and security is pushing him away. Kevin Hart was bombed after the Super Bowl. Who oh, was he bombed? He was clearly bombed well before the Super Bowl ended, too, yeah. by the way. Wow. Clearly. Who do you think is more bombed? Uh, Kevin Hart after the Super Bowl or Joe Namath when he tried to make out with Susie Culber? 
Oh. I mean, in case you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Namath was definitely more bobbed. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't even keep his composure. That's a class, classic moments. I mean, I mean, Susie Colber was a decent-looking woman back then, but I don't know yeah. that I'd be like telling her I wanted to make out with her live on TV. She's she's still one of she's she's one of my out-of-the-box hotties, man. She always has been. She, she's not even that big. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus, he, he does like some skinny broads. Because Su- Su- and when I say skinny, I mean skinny. Because yeah, Susie Colber is pretty skinny you, lady. You, you couldn't just allow a comment to happen. <laughs> You had to take it to another place. You can't just hey, allow something to be on its own. Let's be fair. I did give you perhaps the greatest compliment I've ever given you on this show to start the segment. Just I had to I, balance that, it out That somehow. I'm the Matthew McConaughey of this show? <laughs> yeah, I had to. Uh, of podcasting, really. I don't know anybody like you in the game. There's, there's tons of people like me. Yeah, where's my royalties? Then? I ridiculous need, I need, blowhard. I need to start seeing those things. Well, we can start with Kevin Hart. <laughs> All right. I'm a- so, hey, so, hey, Kevin. Fly is a fly. Yes, so, thank thank you. Fly. We're he live sounds here like on, a little uh, kid. King Prime on NFL Network. So, be honest. You can tell Fletcher Cox, one of the best defensive players ever. Were you the little, best. Were you a little the nervous best. when Brady had the ball? The best. Tell him. Tell him. The best. Tell him again. Not one of the best. Yes, so, I like it. How'd you feel That's when Brady had that ball and got sacked? <laughs> Lost the ball. I'll say this. We're very lucky to have this guy a part of this team. Hey, kiss you. I've been drinking. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on cloud nine. You started the celebration early. No, I'm, I started the celebration early, but it was supposed to happen. It happened. You called it. It was it, supposed man. to happen. You called it. He did call it. This was believe. supposed to happen. Like, well, we got a great unit. We got a great team. We got a great defensive line. I'm standing behind you. I don't want you to fall off the stage. Wait, get off me. I don't want you to fall off the stage. Wait, I'm not. Drunk. Get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to catch Get off him. Of me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. How do you celebrate this win tonight? What do you do from here? You know what? Philadelphia is a great city. I thought Dion was legitimately concerned. What yeah. we can do. We get. Oh, oh, they bleeped it out. Yeah. I, I love you. All right, he got to go. He cursed on live TV. Oh no! And they bleeped it out. Here we go. I think I got it here though. I've been drinking. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on cloud nine. I'm celebration I'm on cloud nine. I'm celebration early, but you know what? Philadelphia is a great city. I thought. I hope this is an example of what we can do. We what? gave a fuck. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin, I, I, love, I, I love you. All right, he got to go. He got. He got to go. Listen, that. <laughs> You know what? I will say this. That's the funniest thing Kevin Hart's ever to, done. To his credit, yes. with how drunk he clearly was, as soon as he said the word, he realized, oh, no, I'm and on, walked away. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on national television. <laughs> ah. Well, at least he had the presence of mind for that. Yeah. Good for him. So I, I want to compare it. I want to compare it to the Susie Culber. Uh, Been drinking for several. Oh hours. fuck! This isn't even it. I believe oh, it uh, everything that anyone else has watched. <laughs> uh, Chad play. Uh, Chad, Chad play. play. Impresses them. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. <laughs> struggling. It was awful. <laughs> I want to kiss you. <laughs> I want to kiss you. I couldn't care. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what the does way it? Joe says the word play. <laughs> you know. You know what gets missed when you don't actually see the clip is the he face. He was looking longingly into the her face eyes. Face he makes right before he says the comment is is classic. He was a little more drunk than Kevin Hart. I think he was. I mean, Kevin Hart probably only needed to drink about a thimble full of Bud Light. He's so little <laughs> to get him that to get him that hammered. He was bombed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dion's trying to catch him from falling off the stage. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here watching this. I'm like, why the hell is Dion like, standing behind Fletcher, Fletcher Cox? And then I realized, I think he wants to try to catch Kevin Hart if he falls off the stage. Which, by the way, would have made this so much better. So much better. It would what, have. What'd you find? Well, we we were we were sharing some of the me uh, some of the funny memes that have come out. Yeah, and we already had one of the Prince, uh, you know, image on the screen from last night, right? And yeah, one of them yeah, was, yeah. was the Dave Chappelle. Look at this other one I just found. It's also very well done by somebody. 
I'm so drunk, I feel retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld, Jerry in the uh, in the puffy shirt, superimposed over oh, Prince's man, body. That's funny as heck. Oh man, what happened next? What happened? What, 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 what was the what was the next thing in the, in the hilarity of the of the post Super Bowl festivities? Uh, I'm, another meme here, and uh, says the worst part about Philadelphia Eagles winning is all the dumpster babies <laughs> who will be born. Addicted to crack and alcohol nine months from now. Oh my god, no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who tweeted that? Uh I have no idea, but <laughs> it was at the NFL memes website on Facebook. And just, you know, scrolling through, I see that I was like, What? Holy shit. Why they why they gotta be dumpster babies though? I don't know. Why can't they just be regular ass babies? Now I'm sure there's going to be a lot of babies born about nine months from now. Yeah, there's a lot of Philly fans that was getting it on. No, yeah. Now here's another one. What percentage of them are going in the dumpster? That's true. <laughs> An Eagles fan rips his seat out of Vikings Stadium after Super Bowl win and snuck it out. Get the fuck out of here! This seems impossible. Get the fuck out of here! That did not actually happen. He checks he it at coat video. check. At coat check? Like, at the stadium? Yeah. What the hell? He does appear to be holding a purple seat. <laughs> How he got that out? I have and no he does, does he, lo- he looks big enough that he probably could have ripped that Unless seat Unless they were giving out replica seats to fans. <laughs> 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 Which I think is probably not a thing that's ever going to happen. You can get your custom seat number on it. Only $149.99. Three installments. Yeah, probably more. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Another good one that I saw. costs more than Hope Solo's serum. What was it? Another good one. And this one is uh, it's pretty pretty savage. That would also not be a comfortable seat to like put in a man cave either, by the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you did that like and you think it's going to be like, oh, this is going to be the coolest like man cave feature ever. No, it's not. Is anybody ever truly like comfortable in any stadium seat? Is there such a thing as like a seat where you're like, "Oh, I wish I had this at my house." No. It's not a thing. But it was his seat from good when his team won the Super Bowl. Can't wait till he gets that bill from <laughs> From the from the Vikings. Well, yeah. Now that it's all over to interwebs. You, uh, nope. Excuse me, sir. I think you may have stolen something that we that belonged to us. <laughs> that was Prince's seat. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, you went there, did you? Yeah, I did. Long before Timmy Brady was married to Giselle. Timmy. Timmy. Yeah. Timmy Brady. Do you, ever, do you ever watch the the league? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. All right, you should get it now. Long before he married Giselle, he was dating another fine woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bridget Moynihan. Well, during the game, she tweeted at Nick Foles saying, hashtag Nick Foles is having an amazing game at Eagles at NFL. <laughs> She's trying to get it on. <laughs> but this is the best part. With a married man? She tweeted the praises for Foles during halftime, ignoring Brady's actually more impressive stats. <laughs> 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 oh, some of these are just well. well she true. wasn't. The, she wasn't the only one that had words for Nick Foles. No, she was. There, she, there, there, she, by the way, she's probably glad she didn't wind up with Tom because then Tom would be making out with her kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. Tom Brady can't always go home and make out with his kid. Still, he's still got that weird. Help him check his fantasy team. We, you missed this. Did you see this? Did you see that clip? We're no. not gonna play it right now, but we'll play it because we well we can play it later or we can play it off the it show. Was, or whatever, it was, he had an uncomfortably long disturbing. kiss with his eleven year old son. That he son. basically forced his son into like the son kisses him like on the cheek like a normal individual would do, and then Brady basically like calls him back for like a long like like a kiss between two lovers. I mean it was like it was <laughs> I mean it was weird. I will say this. I don't think there's anything untoward going on there. It was just weird. It was just weird. That's all. So you're, so you're saying the awkwardly long kiss was on the up and up? <laughs> I hope it wasn't on the up and up under Tom's towel as he was getting that massage. Wow. I can't say that much. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. That was a zinger. Uh, no, but uh, uh, Bridget Moynihan wasn't the only one with words for Nick Foles no. uh, after the Super Bowl here. Uh, nope. There were a group of young ladies that, um, well, I'll just I'll just play the clip. You be the judge. Nick Foles, take him out! 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 
I'm pretty sure she says exactly what they get at the end. <laughs> I was, I, that's the third time, and I've I, two out of three, I've heard the same thing. Well, ladies, um, that was not very ladylike. Nope. And Nick by the way, is a married man. The still before you play the now you've got it paused on a different spot because it's really hard. But the the part the preview the, still yes is so perfect for the video. Oh, oh yes, yes. The, chi- the chick's mouth is just in perfect, just gaping, just blowjob position, gaping like Hope Solo's <laughs> asshole. Just to get, just okay. They want. I think you heard what they wanted. And I will, but I will say this. From what I can see in this video, they're all pretty hot. Yeah. All of them. Like, they don't even have, like, the one ugly broad to make the rest of them look hotter. They're just all hot. Yeah. What? By the way, complete side, side note, but why is that always a thing? The ugly broad? Why does there always have to be one? I mean... Is it just a, is because just a, the game wouldn't be any fun? Is it just a law of averages that you're, you have, if you have, like, five or six friends, that one of them has to just be just a... Just a just a dumpster queen. Yeah, they have to have a they have to have a grenade. <laughs> it's just it's just it's just such is life. And you know what? And if we, you, and ladies, if you don't know who that girl is in your group, you probably shouldn't go need, out with need, them next we need time. Buddy, we need Jeff's buddy to come hang out with us every time, then because he'll be the one jumping on the grenade. <laughs> you know, you know gladly. What? There, there actually is. I do remember a few years ago, a movie came out and it was all about kind of like this this premise. And I think the term was called Duff, designated ugly female friend. Oh, that was uh, yeah. It's uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've actually seen it. It was actually entertaining, to be honest. And and the chick who plays the Duff is not ugly. It's just the rule of women. They always got to have that Duff with them. I think it's a safe. I think it's a good strategy for those ladies because men are creeps. So they got to have the one that they know probably isn't going to get any action, and so then they can say, well, you know. I really gotta. I really gotta stay with my friend. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a smart. It's a good strategy, especially in today's landscape. I like it. I'm starting to understand now that I'm now that I'm more. Uh, <laughs> I'm more adult with age. <laughs> I guess as I as I just played a video of a bunch of hot chicks screaming that they want Nick Foles' dick in their mouth. Nobody, very happy nobody to told them goal. they had to do it. Nope, they just did it on their own. There's another video that we pulled up too. Which one? Uh, did there I pull up go. another one? Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. While, while they're what? just playing, I'm gonna grab a beer real quick. What are all of these idiots doing? So to kind of give you a uh, synopsis to the here to the people listening, you got judging at this picture, eh, maybe like a dozen, fifteen to twenty max people standing on top of an awning. Outside of a hotel, they're standing on like a v- one of those vinyl canopies. Yes, that you see that you used to see outside of big lots. Like <laughs> they're, they're yeah. not standing on a balcony. They're not standing on anything with with any sort and of structural it, integrity. I mean, you're, you, the video's not even playing, and you can already see that it has a bow in it. But you 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 got to listen to the chick who's filming it. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, hey, I caught that shit. I caught- <laughs> yeah, those people take a fall. Was that Respucia from Norbit? Is that what that was filming that? <laughs> she just. <laughs> oh, shit. I caught that shit. <laughs> oh, she's so proud of herself. It finally went viral. Now, here's another one. And this, the caption is commercials count. Oh, God, I didn't even pay attention to the commercials this year. I really didn't. There was a couple of good ones. Tom Brady is now 0-3 in Super Bowls in which Eli Manning has appeared in. <laughs> <laughs> commercials count. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> well, then there was that uh, that thing we shared on the Facebook page, that Scooby-Doo thing. Freddy, Freddy's going, who is this Nick Foles really? And he pulls Nick Foles' face off and it's, it's Eli Manning, Manning underneath. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow, did we miss any? I'm, I'm going through them trying to... Here we go. Uh, Ice Cube. Brady and the Patriots lost in the Super Bowl. Today was a good day. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't get over this awning. Like what? What in the world possessed thirty-five people to stand on this awning? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me, let me. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> let me back this up. What would possess one person to stand on that fucking awning? <laughs> Just, I just don't want to know what happens if the Lions win the Super Bowl. I don't want to know what happens. Like, what dude is walking by and trying to figure out how he's going to celebrate this monumental event that's happened in his life, and he says, you know what? I think the perfect thing to do is to stand on this awning made of fabric. <laughs> That'll work well. I got to tell you something. I think they were playing a game of, like, break the ice or fucking human Jenga or something because... Uh, no, I, th I think they were just trying no, to make the world's shittiest they, no, pyramid. They, they were just trying to see how many people they could get up on that bitch before it fell down. Yeah. I got to tell you, it was an impressive number. <laughs> what the hell did you just show me? How to beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Just be a goofy-looking quarterback. <laughs> that's it, man. That's the, only, that's the only skill you need to have. Oh, man, uh, some of these are just too good. You should throw me in there. Throw me under center. I'll beat the Patriots if that's the case. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about uh, Tom Brady's drop. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I think it was an, uncons an inconsequential play in the game, ultimately. It was. But, but I got to tell you something. Tom Brady looked like – he honestly looked like the most – or I'm sorry, the least athletic person I've ever seen on any professional field or court ever. He's never been a good athlete. He that that that, that like that's just another thing that just, makes his his career so insane. Dave, yeah. Dave, we could have thrown Kristen out there to run that play, and she might not have caught the ball, but she would have made it look a lot more athletic than and graceful than that. Well, I mean, she would have been it would have been distracting because her boobs would just been bouncing around, <laughs> and that's you know, and I, I don't care about the ball anymore. <laughs> it's so great that you've been married for this amount of time, and you're still just so so sexually interested in your own wife. That's awesome. I'm good. It's good for you. Good for you. Hey, dude. I don't care how old I get. Boobs are boobs. You know, it's <laughs> one of those things. You know, what are you gonna do? You never get bored. The with male them? idiot brain is just programmed to just. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> And I can't turn it off. I don't know. What that, I don't I'm sure do. she would be. Yeah, like, I even wear my tight underwear for the bonus <laughs> speech. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure she would be wearing a sports bra if she were. Yeah, playing actually, in I'm sure. I'm, if she, she was playing, playing in the Super, in the Super Bowl, Bowl. Yeah, I think she probably. Yeah, <laughs> she probably would be. I would probably be a multimillionaire if my wife was playing in the Super Bowl. Oh, that could would you be imagine? The, could you imagine the endorsements? Yes. yes. Tampax. <laughs> <laughs> why did it have to go there? That's very sexist. Because why not? I was going to say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if you did say it, I was going to say it. Victoria's Secret would be in there. Oh, God. Was there anything else that was hilarious that happened before, during, or after the Super Bowl that hey, we missed? Qu question. Do you think, uh, do you think Tom Brady gets any free Victoria's Secret stuff because of Giselle? <laughs> that was what he was wearing when he was getting a massage and making out with his kid. He, you know what? He he probably has custom-made Victoria's Secret jock straps that I he could, wears all the time. No, well... Well, that might be with lace, but I could I could easily see him walking around a house in, Gin in Giselle's underwear. Come on, you could see that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> like a little booty, little booty shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was picturing just. Uh, Never mind. I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, enough. If you were if movie. you were gonna say I was picturing a thong, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't work. Uh, there you have it. The NFL catch rule. Any questions? And it's basically like the chalkboard from Goodwill Hunting. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! A much larger version Accurate. of that chalkboard. Accurate. Uh, I don't remember where I was going next. Oh, I remember where I was going next. No, I don't. Where was I going next? <laughs> You're like looking at us to read your mind. I don't, you know, I don't know. I ran out of gas. I ran out of gas after that awning fell. I can't get my mind off of that thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Philadelphia was all prepared for, you know, the the, the, the pole climbing and greasing up the poles, but there ain't much you're going to do about that awning situation. <laughs> I bet you. It's not, I bet, not a whole lot of preparation funny, you can you know make for funny? that. I bet you. And they, I mean, they must have fallen 20 feet. 
And I bet you everybody walked away from that bitch unscathed. I'm sure they're fine. Oh, everybody they're, was they're all inebriated. So, you, so you, lubed up that it didn't even matter. Well, yeah. And when, when you, the, yeah, you ever notice how anytime, like, you are never more limber than when you're drunk. I just love the reaction. Oh, just, yeah, I called that shit. Hey, I called I that call- shit. <laughs> just, I called that shit. Is that shit going to be having one of the dumpster babies? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I just say that? I shouldn't have said that. Wow. I apologize for that. That was that was rude of me. <laughs> it's just rude. Oh, God. And I'm not even lubed up tonight. I hope you never get lubed up while, <laughs> while I'm in your presence, Dan. I don't need that. It's, it's a enough. euphemism for getting drunk. I Dave. am fully aware that that was supposed to be a joke, but I took it to another place. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about Tom Brady and a thong, dumpster babies, and getting lubed up. Why do all I these things it. sound worse the second time? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the one that said some of them, but they somehow still seem so much worse the second time through. Where did you want to move to? The future the future of these two football teams? Because I think they're on very different trajectories. They certainly are. Very different trajectories. Because look at let's look at the Eagles for just a second. Um they've got a franchise quarterback that they're paying chicklets comparatively for a quite and they considerable won amount the of time. So game without him. It's with, insane. With, without him. It's insane. Anyway. So that that guy'll be gone. The, the the dude that these these ladies all wanted is their dick in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going back to that. Uh, well, you got a franchise quarterback that's getting paid chicklets for right now, right? You've got a play caller and a head coach that demonstrated his genius already. Right now, you got a pretty solid defensive coordinator. If he doesn't end up, let me obviously he's not leaving this this off season, but got a hell of an offensive line. <laughs> yep. Right now, you've got. A nice running back tandem. Now, who knows how long that'll last, because we know how running backs are in the NFL. But for now, and at least for one more year, you've got that going on for you. What Did did Blount sign a, um, a two-year deal? Or I, I don't know that he did, but he could come back if he wanted to. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, dude. Look good in that Lions blue. Would have last year, too. That's that's pretty accurate. <laughs> and, and let's... And I... I don't put it past when you have now that you have two Patriots guys in there, both GM and coach. Don't don't uh, you know? Don't be surprised if that's something that happens. Because if that's if that's if that's a guy that Patricia likes, and it's very possible that he did, you could see him saying, "Hey, Bob, let's let's go bring Legarrett here and 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 make that work." I'm glad you brought up uh, Matt Patricia again here because I think that's a big reason why the uh, the Patriots' trajectory is going to be heading downward yeah. at this point. Um, I think we've seen the best we're going to see out of the Patriots for sure. Um, and there's a few reasons why. There's kind of a perfect storm right now. And we haven't even gotten to the biggest one and maybe going to be what's going to be the story of the offseason in what Gronk decides to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Tom Brady's 40 years old. I know what he said. He wants to play till he's 100. It's not fucking realistic. Okay. Tom Brady is still playing like an all-pro. Uh, won the MVP this year. Uh, maybe might not have won the MVP if uh, Carson Wentz doesn't get hurt. Um, but can, can I make an addendum to what you just said? What? Real quick before we can move. Uh, well, the, the real number, first of all, I know we facetiously say 100, and it's because it seems ridiculous. He says he wants to play until he's 45. I don't actually think it's an insane concept to think that Tom Brady can be Pretty close to what he's been up to that point, but the problem with the, the but the other thing about it is Tom Brady could be great and, and and continue to be as effective as he is, but he needs to have the players around him, and that's the part that I don't know if that's going to continue to be the case. Here's the thing with Br- Brady's really the last thing to consider here. I was just bringing up his age, all right, because <clears throat> right, this, I understand he won the MVP this year. Uh, he missed four games last year, but by Tom Brady, and, and and keep in mind, this is comparing Tom Brady to Tom Brady. Why? Because he's the greatest of all time. So I don't want anybody to get too upset, but he hasn't been as good these past couple of seasons. Now, obviously, he's still Hall of Fame worthy. I'm Hall of Fame worthy. Duh. That's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was he's still MVP worthy. Right. 
But compa- if we're comparing Tom Brady to just Tom Brady. W- wouldn't have won it, by the way, if Carson Wentz doesn't get hurt. Just saying. I, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. But that's just the first part. The other part is this. You're losing both your coordinators. And I think Matt Patricia leaving Bill Belichick is probably the biggest deal of any of his uh, coaches of his staff that have left him in the past just because of what Matt Patricia clearly is to Bill Belichick. Groomed him from basically since he was a little kid <laughs> in the NFL. Yeah. And made him what he is. So this, I think this is a little different than, you know, Mancini and Bill O'Brien and the others. I, I do. I just, I genuinely feel that way. Now, what Matt Patricia is going to be as a head coach, obviously that still remains to be seen, and it's not something that I'm willing to predict. But you're also losing Josh McDaniels. Now, I understand he's left once before. You're likely, I guess it's possible that he comes back, but you're likely losing your all-pro left tackle in Nate Solder in the offseason. And Bill Belichick's not getting any younger. Your computer agreed, by the way. I, I guess, I guess, I guess it did. <laughs> and Bill Belichick's not getting any younger, by the way. I mean, we may have seen the Patriots take that. We may start to see the Patriots take that turn over the bell curve and head back down the other side. And I don't know how long it's going to take for it to crash and burn. I could see it crash and bur- crashing and burning very quickly. Given all of those things. Or it could be a gradual pr- progression over, I'm not going to say too long, two, three seasons maybe. I could see that. Probably two. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be relatively quick. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about the fact that Rob Gronkowski is considering retirement. Can I give you guys a crazy stat, by the way? Sure. That's, it's com- I guarantee you it's just completely coincidental, but it is, I found it to be a very interesting stat. So since 2001... Including this year, there have been 10 quarterbacks during that portion of time who have been the NFL MVP for the regular season and gone on to play in the Super Bowl. Every single one of those teams have lost. Isn't that a weird stat? What? It, it, there are 10 quarterbacks since 2001 who have won the regular season MVP award, okay. correct? And gone to play, in and, the go, Super and then gone to play on play in the Super Bowl, and, and every lost. single one of those teams that that quarterback played for lost the Super Bowl. Who are the quarterbacks? Kurt Warner in '01, Rich Gannon in 2002, uh, Tom Brady in 2007. Well, hold on, one, two. I'm sorry, there's eight. I apologize. I, I said ten. It was okay. eight. Um, uh, I said Tom Brady in 2007, Peyton in 2009, Peyton again in 2013. Newton in 2015, Matt Ryan last year, and Tom Brady this year. Oh wow, it's a weird stat. That is, and what, and that's what, that's even what three out of the last four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, like I said, I mean, again, it's a completely coincidental thing. I don't think there's really any actual correlation. It's just one of those weird anomaly stats that I saw it today and I went, "That's pretty bizarre." Yeah, yeah. It seems like that wouldn't happen that many times, but it, yeah, eight, eight, eight times since 2001. Anyway, I just saw that earlier, and I just wanted to bring it up. That, that's it an interesting kind of statistic. And in 2001, that would have been uh, Brady, Brady's first. Brady's yeah. first. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for bringing it up. <sighs> that, was, that was the tuck rule year. What about, what about Rich Gannon in 2002? What about your team? We man? certainly don't talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would hurt more. It did no, it didn't, and here's why. And we'll get off. We'll get off. I mean, I guess it's still. But it's super, okay. You got you got your coach back, and now. it's still Super Bowl related. No, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> that's another gonna be. That's gonna be another interesting story. Let's see how that in goes. In two thousand one, that was the I like in I like in the Raiders in two thousand one, basically to the twenty thirteen Tigers. Very very similar, uh, spot. You get you, you you just barely miss getting to the championship series or the championship game, but that was your best team. Yeah, and that's how I felt about the Raiders in two thousand one. So that's why that one kind of stings more. Two thousand two, when they lost that damn Super Bowl, that was the perfect fucking storm to lose that Super Bowl. When you consider the fact that John Gruden is traded to the other team that you're playing against, 
And Bill Callahan's dumbass rolls in there and sides, we're going to run the exact same system John ran when he was here, and then they play him in the Super Bowl, and he didn't change anything. John Gruden's coaching staff in that Super Bowl knew everything that was coming. Rich Gannon and that Raider offense didn't have a chance, especially when you consider the fact that that Tampa defense is one of the greatest single-season defenses of all time. They are indeed. Looking back on that game, because believe me, I've dissected it, <laughs> it just it made total sense. It made total sense that that game went down the way that it did. Anyway, that's why we, we don't talk about those. Fair enough. That sorry, was the last, sorry for bringing that, that up. That was the last chance they he, had. He who shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> now, question. Uh-huh. With the coordinators leaving, who who do you think in New England system, are they going to promote within or are they going to Oh, hire? they'll promote within. Well, That's he, what Belichick does. Here's what's interesting, though, and, and we'll see. Unless he brings back a guy he's super familiar with. The only th- well, the, the interesting one to me is more so is the, the defensive coordinator spot. Um, because there's been all these things thrown around the last couple of days. So, so a week and a half, actually not a week and a half, a couple of weeks ago when Arizona officially made their head coaching hire, right? The Cardinals, because Brian Flores, the, the current defensive backs coach for the Patriots was actually in the running for the Cardinals head coaching job. Kind of not, I shouldn't say out of nowhere, but this was his first year really in the interviewing cycle. Uh, And a lot of people were kind of surprised that, Everybody knew McDaniels and Patricia were going to get interviews and probably end up with jobs, but the fact that Flores was getting a head coaching interview was a surprise to a lot of people. That kind of out of nowhere, and so anyway, when he didn't get the job, everybody went, "Okay, well then now he's just gonna, he's just going to wind up taking over." When everybody basically knew Patricia was coming to Detroit, they're like, "Okay, well Flores is just going to take over the, the coordinator job okay. in New England." But now over the last couple of days, there's been all this this chatter about Greg Schiano to the Patriots, which. I was like, well, that'd be interesting, and I, could, I was the first thought, thought I had was, please hire him as your D coordinator, and then Matt Patricia can bring Brian Flores over here yeah, as the D nice. coordinator. That'd be fantastic. Um, but what what it sounds like is going to happen, or very likely may happen, is that there's truth to both things. There's truth to uh, Brian Flores being promoted, and it's also there's also truth to the, the thought that Greg Schiano is going to be brought in, and. I figured if Shiano leaves Ohio State, it would be ha- it would have to be for a coordinator position, right? But I guess him and Belichick know each other have known each other for a long time. Again, it's all about relationships, obviously. Seems that way at least. And sounds like what people are expecting to happen. And, and in, in fact, even our uh, uh, good buddy of the show, Dave Burkett, I was uh, kind of looking at a, a Facebook video that he he did yesterday, and uh, his his uh, intel is telling him that Brian Flores is almost assuredly going to be the new defensive coordinator and that Shiano might be brought in as like assistant head coach slash like defensive line. So he'll be in there and be in a position of power without having the coordinator title and it gives Flores his chance to be promoted, which was a little disappointing to me because like I said, I would love if Brian Flores was basically set free because Belichick decides he's just angry and wants to have somebody else new come in. But um, offensively though, I have no idea. I don't know anything about the offensive staff. Behind McDaniel's, I don't know if there's somebody on that staff that Belichick really likes enough to promote. That's going to be interesting. I think I think defensively, the the route is f- fairly uh, concrete, but offensively, I have no idea. I don't know what they do for that. It's side. interesting, man, and it's that's it's the downward trajectory has to start. This could be the, this could be the time. It's not. It's, it's be the not very. I don't think it's very common. I know it happens. I'm not saying it never happens, but I think it's an uncommon thing to lose both coordinators in the same offseason. It doesn't happen a lot. With a 40-year-old quarterback, <laughs> yeah. maybe losing your left tackle. I mean, if there was ever a time where Belichick could finally maybe have a little bit of kryptonite coming his way, I would think it would be this upcoming season. Now, I'm not going to bet against the guy. <laughs> I think I think that'd be a really jackass move, but let's let's just just consider it a possibility. Like I I don't know who the Patriots like QB coach is, but it wouldn't shock me if it's somebody like that that gets gets promoted from within because obviously that guy they don't is, even hire one Tom Brady just calls a place. <laughs> Tom Brady just it just gets the secondary title of offensive coordinator. Yeah, he's the he's the OC. He's the OC. <laughs> we don't need anybody else. But yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. Um, 
and we'll we'll see how it works. We'll see we'll see what the Patriots look like next year and uh and like you said, I mean, I'm, I'm one of the one of the biggest things for them is obviously going to be uh well, they're going to have a lot of personnel decisions, obviously, but one of their biggest ones is going to be what what happens if Gronk decides he's done. Gronk decides I, I don't want to do this anymore. Which I, could happen. And I'm going to tell you right now. I think he should retire. I, he's not going to be any better. I really think he should retire. Right. This dude, he's, he's broken down all the time because he gets hammered. I, I, we, I was, the way he plays, and I love it. I right? was just, we're, I feel like we had this conversation last season, me, you, and Jeff, and I was sitting here, and I was sit, sitting right here in this chair talking about how Gronk can't do this much longer. Yeah. And Jeff looks at me. Oh no, you're crazy. He'll be. He'll always be great. He'll always be a freak. And it's like. Yeah, he will, but how long is his body going to allow him to continue to play the football the way that he plays the game? This guy has been hurt every single season he's been in the league. Every single season. He's like bionic at this he's point. He's almost... Now, a couple of those times I think he only missed a game. But still, he's got the elbow issues. He's got... I, I I actually had a list of all of Rob Gronkowski's injuries earlier, and I can't remember what they all were. But he's had surgery after surgery, and and then and then and then to cap it off in the AFC Championship game, the dude took a brutal brutal hit and was barely cleared to play for the Super Bowl. Yeah, Gronk and Gronk, in my opinion, doesn't really have anything left to prove. I think he's a surefire Hall of Famer. I'll tell you what I had. I, I had some conversations yesterday at my party with a couple of people because at one it was it was during had that, a great game yesterday. Yeah, Gronk it was did. it was during that third quarter where where Gronk really kind of blew up and 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 went all Gronk, you know. Um, and Brady just got and th- th- that's that's I think that's what makes him so great is like even when Brady just keys in on him and it's like everybody and their brother in the stadium, every person on that field knows it's going to Gronk and it just doesn't matter. I I told a couple of guys last night I said you know you can debate me if you want and I'm sure there's plenty of, there's plenty of debatable points to be made but and I I've said this on the show before I think Gronk is the single greatest offensive weapon in the game of football. He's if if he's you know on, he is? he's you know what he is? He's the Shaquille O'Neal of the NFL. He's indefensible. He's so, physically dominant yeah. in every way. And and he's he's he is a freak. He's an absolute freak and and I and I as many people talk about Gronk, I I, I this might seem blasphemous to blasphemous, blasphemous to say this, but I actually think Gronk gets slightly underrated. I don't think people talk about how good he is as a football player. No, you know what I think it is? I think everybody knows how 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 awesome he is. I don't think he's necessarily gotten respect from a historical perspective. Maybe that's what it is. Because like I said, I think Rob Gronkowski is the Shaquille O'Neal of football. I mean, there's just nobody like him. He's, there's he's nobody crazy. is physically dominant and as athlet- and, as- and as athletically gifted See, at the it's same not time. Easy. But <laughs> But you don't you don't hear him mention with a guy like Tony Gonzalez. Why? Because Tony Gonzalez, who's widely regarded as the best tight end ever, certainly sure. the best receiving tight end ever, a guy played eighteen years or whatever the hell it was. So yeah, he's got a lot of those cumulative stats. And if that's the way that you look at Rob Gronkowski, then no, you're not going to look at Rob Gronkowski and say that he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, let me, but I, I think I think especially today, and I'll let you go ahead. Mm-hmm. Especially with the way the game is today. We're going to start seeing a lot more NFL Hall of Famers that have shorter careers. With the with the stuff with the guys aren't going to be playing 12, 14, 15 years anymore and that's the only way you can get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, about the only guys that are going to be long have longevity in their careers that are going to be these surefire Hall of Famers. Quarterbacks. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, so so when I look at Gronk with all that considered, he's a surefire Hall of Famer in my book. Let me say this too. Um the amount of injuries that he's suffered, and again, part of it is is the, the his style of play, which is one of the reasons that I love him and that I love watching him, is because he is just so physical at the point of contact all the time. He throw, and he throws a great cruise. <laughs> but he, uh, you know, you you we've talked about we've in debated, my vagina. We've debated 
I guess I'll use the term. We've debated Tom Brady's greatness on this show before, especially with Jeff, and and we've debated and and you specifically have as far made as a comment what about, makes Tom Brady great. Well, because I don't think anybody's the, I don't think the, anybody's no, no, no. debating whether to or not point, he's great. To the point <laughs> that you that you said that you think that Tom Brady is to a certain degree a system quarterback, right? And I think there's some I think there's got to be some truth to that. When you look at the way that the game, the way that he has played his entire career, because he's played for the same coach in the same system, there is, I think there has to be some form of truth to that. But what I was going to say to that regard, when you talk about their style of play and how there is a lot of, uh, o- over the course of a season, there is a lot of dink and dunk style to what the Patriots do, right? And it's worked great because they've they've drafted well and they have found guys and they they do an amazing job of filling their roster with the right pieces. But is it not possible that because of all the ding and dunk and the amount of times that Gronk is asked to go over the middle and in the into the most crucial areas where you know you're going to get hammered again and again and again and again? Yes, tight ends have to do that to a certain degree just by nature. But Tony Gonzalez was not used that way, right? He didn't take the same kind of hits on a regular basis that Gronk takes. And I think part of it is the system that New England runs. He gets put into these positions where you know you're going to catch this ball and just immediately be absolutely smoked. And he goes in and he does it because he's a physical marvel, but he gets beat up. It's going to happen to anybody. I don't care how physically strong you are. It's a brutal game, and if you're in those spots all the time, you're going to take huge shots and you're going to get hurt. It's just inevitable. <laughs> it turns out Gronk's not just a piece of meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he sure looks like one, but no, I I think he, Saturdays for the boys, man. I think he should retire. I honestly like I'm I'm rooting for Gronk, and, and that's not it, it, it's not, well, it's easy for you to say you hate the Patriots, you want him to be shitty. No, I want I want Gronk to retire for his own health. I really do. Like it's it, I mean, and and it all depends on because did, did you did you see the post game press conference when he was asked the question about I like, actually did are you not. thinking about I, I actually I, did I, not I, see I had it. it, but you know, in a nutshell, basically he was asked. Um, you know, the reporter had said something about, you know, there were some rumors about you might be considering retirement and he go he basically goes, "Well, I don't know how I don't know how you heard that, but I'm going to I'm certainly going to evaluate my future." And he sounded like a guy that he sounded like I mean, it might just be because he's coming off of a loss in the Super Bowl and I get that, but he sounded like a guy that was pretty serious about it. And we know that, you know, once training camp rolls around, guys start to feel a little bit healthier. They're feeling good again. They still got the fire for the game, and they come back. We see that all the time, mm-hmm. and that could be very well be the case for Gronk. But I just look at the guy. I'm like, you've won a couple of Super Bowls, dude. Like you're a perennial All Pro. Y- you know, y- you've got. Y- you don't really have anything left to prove. You've proven that y- you might be the most physically dominant athlete in the history of the NFL. And unless you're worried about your Hall of Fame status, which, in my opinion, I don't think you should be. There's really not much left to do. You know, it's not like a Brady situation where Brady plays a position that you can have longevity at that position. And and, and your body's not going to get as banged up as it is if if you play a position like Gronk's or any other position on the field. So it's a little bit different situation. And I realize I realize how young Gronkowski is. He'll he'll still only be 29 at the start of next season. He's a young man. He's young, he's younger than all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so but even with that said, I'd love to see him walk away. Be done. You got nothing left to prove to anybody. I'd love to see Brady walk away too. Tell you the truth, he he can't because he's a maniac. Who Tom Brady? Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, he. he, he you know, you know what Tom Brady's going to be. He's going to be another one of those greats. Overstays his welcome. He's going to look like a shell of himself. Towards the end, that's what we're. That's what. I, unfortunately, if Tom Brady is serious about what he says about playing playing a four, I don't. I don't give a shit about the whole TB12 garbage. Uh, maybe it is an you know an awesome new great way to keep a football player's body in shape, but Father Time doesn't lose. Yeah, and eventually it's going to happen. Well, I mean, for God's sakes, the guy already can't catch a pass, so. I mean. <laughs> I'm not a receiver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, like, like uh, all kidding aside, I already, I, I kind of already said it when we, what, you know, we were talking about that kind of funny meme about him missing the the catch, but it was actually the 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 trophy. Too yeah. too right? soon, bro. Too soon. <laughs> yeah. But like, 
talking about how it it looked relatively unathletic, and it did <laughs> relatively but, unathletic. But, but, but here's the thing: <laughs> it, that's that's what that's what is amazing to me about Tom Brady's <laughs> career is that this is a guy who has never been a good athlete. He's been able to hide his lack of athleticism he's for never eight, been a good athlete. years. And he's the greatest quarterback in the history of the game. It's, well, it's unreal to me. It's not like Peyton Manning was a great athlete. No, but... He's up there as well. Well, I can tell you right now, there's no chance in hell any offensive coordinator or any offensive staff is ever going to have asked Peyton to try to catch a pass. <laughs> <laughs> never would have happened. <laughs> that would have been, oh my God, I just visualized it. That would have been hilarious to watch. <laughs> it would have been... He would have fallen down. Peyton would. <laughs> Peyton would have fallen on his face. It would. Have, it would have, try to catch a ball. It would have been. It would have been like the like like the horse in the in the uh, Kentucky Derby that when the when the gates open, the horse just like bucks the guy off. There's a lot of great quarterbacks that are unathletic though too, man. You can call you can call call Kenny Stabler a great athlete. Yeah, I guess not. I <laughs> you can call Terry Bradshaw a great athlete. He was a much better athlete than Brady. Terry Bradshaw? Yes. Uh, yeah, I can agree At, with in that. In his prime, 100%. Yeah, I could agree with that. It wasn't, but he's, he's not he's not Usain Bolt out there. Fuck. <laughs> that would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> but Usain just run all the time. He's just <laughs> always running play. Usain Bolt would take one hit and retire. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, he broke What him. is this, man? He broke him immediately. <sighs> he'd have to, he'd have, he'd have to play retire. for the Chargers, though, right? See the Lightning Bolt logo? Oh, just yeah, stop okay. it. I think that's, I think that's our cue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's any. Is there, was there anything we missed? We can talk about the. Uh, we can talk about the uh, the thirty for thirty. On Thursday. Yeah, it was good. The two bills, when uh, when Jeff's here. So Jeff, if you're listening, make sure you watch. The two, but he was calling it Bill and Bill, <laughs> like, like from South Park. Yep. <laughs> Well, that'll get some play. Good. That'll that'll get some play on Thursday. Good, I think. You guys gonna watch that press conference on on Wednesday? Oh no. Well, I'll probably press, watch the highlights. Press conference. Yeah, the uh, with uh, Maddie the, Patty. The Patricia introduction press. Oh. Conference. Yeah, that's why we didn't talk about it much today. There's not it, much to talk about. It's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, we've we've all the all the things that we could talk about before the actual presser. If anything actually comes out from that, we've already talked about. Yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll wait till the press conference, and he'll probably win the press conference as coaches often do, and. And we move on. You know what I'm wondering? Huh. What's he gonna look like? God, if he shaves, I'm gonna, I'm already gonna be. I'm. I'm he's gonna be a failure no, if he, he shaves the beard. He won't, here, here's what I think is gonna happen because it's something that over the last couple of seasons he has done. He 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 grows the beard out longer as the season goes on, and he trims it down after the season ends. I'm sure this will. I, I'm guessing that's what he'll probably have done, and it's probably just gonna be a lot earlier in the off season than he normally does it because he's not normally worried about a press conference. So he'll probably show up in a suit. Oh, I'm sure he will. With but some, I, I kind of hope he just shows up in a, in a in like a starter jacket. With nice great. with nice slick back hair. All right, we got to terminate this podcast. You have the pencil in the ear though. For David Face, Mike Tripp, myself, Dan Griffin. Until Thursday, SportsRadioDetroit.com. We are out of here.